CHS is a community of people that comes together to use gardening and horticulture to advance the greater good. It's this incredible community of people working together through horticulture as a force for change. The idea of walking into a neighborhood with all the answers is so wrong. We're not going in and doing direct intervention. We're teaching people to fish rather than feeding them fish. And I think that's the most important part of what the Hort Society does. It gives people access to beautiful, open, green space and help people build social connections among their residents. Really provide a, a common ground for everybody to come together and work to make neighborhoods stronger. I would say that we are first and foremost a community of people who care about horticulture and want to make positive change in the world. And so anybody who is excited about making change and is looking for a way to do that, we, we welcome them and look forward to seeing them. And there are many other programs around the country, both that we have emulated in our work and also that have emulated, emulated us. Um, especially our vacant land management work called Land Care. Philadelphia Land Care is a program where we work with the city of Philadelphia to clean and green vacant lots citywide. Philadelphia has over 40,000 vacant parcels in its inventory, and we manage 12,000 parcels um, a few different ways. So and that's uh, we have a stabilization component, and we have a community land care component. But the key magic to all of this is the maintenance that happens afterwards. So we maintain these sites from April to October, which is basically the growing season um, for, the, um, for, our, for our work. Um, and then we work with a community, community organizations um, that identify a vacancy in their neighborhood that doesn't have that treatment. Um, we work with 18 community organizations they have uh, contracts anywhere from 200 parcels to 50 parcels. Some of these sites become permanent green spaces. They may start out as just like a green lot, but then people will sit there and create community gardens. It's a good feeling for me anyway, you know what I mean? You know, just driving around and just seeing people, you know, talking to each other and using, using the sites. So imagine having all of these pockets, 12,000 mini parks going around the city, what that can do for people's psyche. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you know, it's the end all the be all, but it's a way that you know, we, should, you know, we should seriously like, think about that. I, us cleaning and greening or creating informal gardens or informal parks, these sites become like the, the fabric of the neighborhood. You know, they like they they want them to stay until like some form of development happens or you know anything that's positive. There's a there's a syndrome in in the the country, uh, plant blindness, that is that means that people don't really see. They don't see trees. They don't see plants. They might walk past them and there is something green in the peripheral of their vision, but they don't see it. PHS has been in the forefront in the, in the nation in, in helping to get rid of plant blindness, to help people to see again. The neighborhoods in Philadelphia that need trees, and there are some neighborhoods that have under 3% tree cover, which means that if you're standing in that neighborhood um, on a hot summer day and it's noon, only 97% of the land will have no tree cover. And nobody wants to live on a block with no trees when they can have shade in the summer and birds singing and uh, all the other environmental benefits. So healthy environments is, is a huge part of PHS. And where you plant trees, you create an environment that's healthy emotionally for people to walk out that door and to see a tree-lined street as opposed to not. That's going to make us a healthier culture. It doesn't have to be horticulture, but our, our gig is horticulture. I mean, we use horticulture 
to teach people. We use horticulture to organize people. We use horticulture as the hook to get people talking to each other, helping each other, improving the quality of life in the city and outside the city. But it doesn't have to be horticulture. Here it is, but everybody should find their little hook. So I've done different jobs, but there is nothing that is similar to the privilege of being at the hub of, you know, literally tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of really passionate people who believe in the cause that this organization represents and want to be part of making positive impact in the world. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing privilege. We're a group where a neighborhood decides it wants to plant trees or create community gardens and we're there to support. So the process of working in new places is very much one of building relationships and seeing where there is interest or uh, ambition to make something happen. PHS has a lot of remarkable qualities. I think the most wonderful thing is the ability of this organization to put whatever time, money, or passion somebody has to contribute to work to make change. So if you show up here and you want to invest some time or you want to invest some money or you want to use your garden, we can figure out how to help you do those things in a way that will advance the greater good. So by investing in us or in the garden group, you're contributing to building community, creating access to fresh food, reducing blighted conditions, and creating great habitat both for people and wildlife in the middle of neighborhoods that really often can benefit from it. We try to be open and inclusive so that we can work in any neighborhood. Target for me is the schools that don't have the funding to do greening programs on their own, so I try to help find them the funding for that and to know how to use it and get some gardens started. More or less, I've been doing kind of the same thing for all of those years because it's my, my mission in life to educate people about gardening. I'll teach anybody that wants to learn. City Harvest was a program that was put together because gardeners are generous people. And what we were seeing over and over again was people would start a garden and they would start to grow food and they would feed everybody that came by. I mean, gardeners, I mean, that's like, don't park your car on lot because they'll fill it with zucchini, kind of the generosity of gardeners. And what somebody finally did was realized we need to measure how much fresh food is going out out of these gardens in the city because that would quantify what we do. The value of the food that's produced in the gardens is really amazing. Uh, most community gardens are in areas that are low income because people have lost their jobs, they've moved, houses get abandoned when people can't maintain them or pay for them. They fall down and they have vacant lots. In more affluent neighborhoods you don't find that. So, and what goes along with that is the need for food. So people who grow their own food have access to fresh, local, all the things that have become very popular now, but uh, we're not always that way. PHS has been supporting community gardens for a long time and about 11 years ago community gardeners came to us and they said you know we have a lot of produce throughout the season that we can't eat at all can you help us figure out places where we could donate some of our extra harvests so we started connecting community gardeners across the city with soup kitchens and food cupboards for them to share their harvests and then we felt like well if we were able to provide a little extra support for these community gardeners we could really help increase the amount of food that they're able to grow in an urban setting so so we have some community-based greenhouses where we grow over 250,000 seedlings every year and give them out to gardeners who care for them, tend them with their neighbors, and then share the harvests with people who need it. It's really important here in Philadelphia. One in five people suffer from food insecurity. That's a really terrible, devastating statistic for our city and gardeners really are trying to make a difference by growing and sharing the food with people who need it. And then each of these gardens adopted a soup kitchen or a food bank or a specific place where their excess produce would go. And there are about 150 gardens right now in the network.
things about Philadelphia and most cities is that it can be very difficult to connect with neighbors in a meaningful way. It's also really important to have green space and green space that doesn't feel abandoned in the city. We also have five beds that are dedicated to city harvest. So in that way, we also contribute produce really directly to, to the broader community. I mean, it adds beauty to the neighborhood. Um, it allows people to meet across all kinds of boundaries and build community in the neighborhood. And it gives people access to fresh produce that they might not otherwise have. I have to toot the horn for, for the uh, Pennsylvania Horticulture Society. They've not only uh, helped us uh, learn how to organize this place, uh, they've helped us uh, with, uh, with grants for, for uh, fencing, uh, for additional lumber so we could build more beds and involve more people. Uh, they provide training to us. Uh, and many of us volunteer at the flower show as a way of paying back. Uh, so it's a, it's a great uh, symbiotic relationship that we have for that, with them. Uh, and we never would have been where we are today if it weren't for the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society. Community gardens are a marvelous asset on many levels. On the personal level, they are great for people to get out of their houses, to get closer to nature and the rhythms of nature, to meet their neighbors. They're healthier and open space in, in a densely packed city like this is always a great boon for everybody. We've also learned about the benefits of community gardening and building healthy communities. And we've also used our work in the Philadelphia Flower Show, in the community and in schools uh, to help people become aware of how horticulture can make positive change. So we have members all over the country and beyond, although heavily concentrated in this region. And the Flower Show is one of the top of its kind in the world. So there's a handful of flower shows that draw uh, the kind of attendance that we draw at a quarter of a million and it's really recognized as a global event. So the, the flower show really is our big mouthpiece. It, it's something that we're, we can communicate to a lot of people um, in a very short period of time to talk about our mission, to talk about the importance of horticulture, to, to talk about how everybody should be gardening and why they should be gardening and that's what the show does um, and this is something that helps PHS communicate its mission and, and really sort of helps us to try to communicate that all year round. The flower show is like this incredible resource for the city of Philadelphia with the amount of people that it brings into the city um, that stay overnight or eat meals or or just take public transit I mean it's huge and and the, it gives the city and it's such a great reputation for, for putting on this amazing program. The most important message I hope people leave today uh, from the flower show is that having flowers, plants, horticulture in your life is really important. And if you don't have that in your life, that you should start. And I hope that we kick-started some, some folks to get involved in gardening and horticulture this year um, and really make plants a part of their lives and make that part of their everyday life. So the process we're in right now is to figure out how to evolve all of our work from the flower show to neighborhoods to our public gardens and landscapes to what we do with home gardeners to make sure that they are all serving as platforms to help people use horticulture to advance those impact priorities. Gardening is inclusive of everyone. Everybody gardens. Everybody eats. Everybody needs to learn where their food comes from and everybody needs to be able to grow their own food. Gardening is just the hook because if we can get people talking to each other about gardening, they're talking to each other. So the more we can get people to talk together and learn to work together, and gardening also teaches you patience because it just doesn't happen overnight. All of those things that you've learned by gardening are applicable to the rest of your life. The most rewarding part about my job is that I get to meet all these amazing neighborhood heroes. All these people that come through, there's been over 5,000 tree tender graduates from our nine hour training. We have all kinds of people here from young high school students to, to blue hairs and, um, and that's really rewarding. Once people you know, gain your trust you know, they open up to you. They tell you things that 
you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I know I'm on the camera, but listen, they'll sit there and say, hey, you know, they'll tell you things that's going on in their life. And the fact is that we're working in neighborhoods where people are challenged to feed their family. And, you know, we're saying like, listen, you know, this, this can help you in a different way. And once they're, you know, once they, you know, they let their guard down, you know, you have a friend for life, you know, and that's, you know, that's, that's a good feeling. You come away feeling so good, not just from what you've accomplished, but because it, it just helps your whole system. PHS is, is like, it's me, you know, I'm a product of, you know, uh, the inner city. You know, I, when I tell kids, like, I say, look at me, like, you, you would have never known that I would be, you know, doing horticulture, having a leadership role at this 200-year-old organization. Anybody who is excited about making change and is looking for a way to do that, we, we welcome them and look forward to seeing them.